Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Seem Lund and in this video we're going to react to Dr. David Sinclair who uh, talks about how mTOR and protein are going to accelerate your aging. Make sure you click a like and subscribe as well for future videos about optimizing your health and performance. Do it! So the first clip we're going to play is going to be actually his own new podcast which I recommend you to check out, uh, Lifespan with Dr. David Sinclair. And in his with his co-host they basically go through uh their book that they uh, wrote together and uh yeah we'll just skip to the clip where he talks about how uh, basically mTOR and the protein can contribute to uh, aging we have a little better understanding now of how sirtuins are are turned on by fasting uh we talked about two other classes of longevity genes in the first episode mTOR and ampk uh do you want to go really briefly through how these genes are impacted when we restrict calories when we fast the first one is M4, which stands for mammalian target of rapamycin, the drug rapamycin. We talked a little bit about it in the last episode, but let's refresh everybody's memory. This is a protein complex in the cell that registers amino acids. When you have a lot of protein, you eat a big steak, it's going to activate this mTOR protein complex that allows the cell, causes the cell to build things. It's one of the reasons eating steak allows you to build more muscle, but that's not a recipe for longevity. What we know from many animal studies, even in yeast, if you downregulate the activity of this mTOR protein complex, you get longer life. Why? Because it's activating a process called autophagy, which recycles proteins. So when you're hungry, this autophagy will get all the old proteins, put them in the recycling bin, um, and then bring them out as fresh proteins. And that seems to be really important for longevity. In fact, even if you just inhibit mTOR and stimulate autophagy, that's sufficient to extend the lifespan of flies and even mice by dramatic amounts, even 30%. So let's kind of analyze it a little bit. mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin, yeah, protein complex, regulates growth pathways regulates things like muscle growth regulates things like nerve cell growth as well as you know cancer cell growth and fat cell growth so yeah there are some benefits to having mTOR but there are also some negative side effects to mTOR and there are a lot of uh, studies in many species showing that uh, yeah mTOR is kind of crucial and central to the aging process if you have overexpressed mTOR or if it's like uh, dysfunctionally express some sort of genetic mutations, then those animals die sooner, they get cancers and uh, tumors, whereas if you inhibit mTOR, then uh, they live longer and they're healthier. So one ways to, one reasons for that is because of yeah, mTOR inhibits the process of autophagy that uh, recycles the cells from different kinds of old material. And uh, mTOR signaling also, uh, you know, makes everything grow and you may develop a cancer sooner because of that. Uh, so there is a lot of truth to that, that the mTOR complex is related to kind of aging, uh, it's a central regulator of lifespan and aging. Many studies have found that, and even like suppressing mTOR, inhibiting mTOR in uh, humans with like rapamycin and these different kinds of drugs, uh, that has been shown to be uh, beneficial for the immune system and uh, just general longevity. There is no human studies that mTOR inhibition is going to extend your lifespan. Uh, but there is animal studies and there is studies that it improves some aspects of health, like uh, just uh, health span, so to say, the better immune system function and uh, that kind of thing. You're getting too old for this shit. So if we look at this uh, graph from the study that I just showed you, then uh, you can see mTOR C1, the complex one that regulate that is regulated by feeding and fasting uh, cues. Basically, if you're fasting, then you suppress mTOR and... Uh, you're going to go into this more state of increased autophagy. Uh, if you're eating, then you're going to stimulate mTOR C1 that leads to anabolism and growth. So excess growth will just accelerate the aging process and and even like cellular senescence increases. The senescence, which is describing the zombie cells, uh, cells that aren't any like with any function, but they're just staying there and spreading inflammation, that is increased by also mTOR C1. So you don't want to be having mTOR C1 activated constantly. And uh, yeah, chronic, but the problem is that chronic mTOR inhibition can also be bad, can cause like muscle atrophy, muscle loss, uh, can reduce uh, beta cell pro proliferation. So to say your pancreas will produce less insulin, you become slightly insulin resistant because of that uh, reduced adipogenesis, which is, you know, good thing that you're not really growing fat cells, but you're not really growing muscle cells either. Uh, so there is a balance to it. And uh, I mean, chronic overactivation of mTOR is also bad. Uh, you will develop insulin resistance and uh, muscle atrophy through other means because your body isn't able to basically utilize uh, the nutrients that you get and you will get also excess adipogenesis or basically a fat cell growth and adipose tissue growth. So there is like a bell curve uh, to mTOR activation and health as this study also points out. So calorie restriction we know is the best way to basically extend the health span and longevity in humans as well. So that is kind of the 
at least the best known way of doing that, there was this rapamycin that uh, suppresses mTOR um, therapeutically that has some uh, benefits on mTOR activation, but it's not as good as calorie restriction, so to say. So rapamycin can also have some negative side effects, uh, so whereas natural means of suppressing mTOR tend to be better. And obesity, obviously, that is a situation of excess mTOR activation because like high blood sugar levels, high insulin levels, those will keep the mTOR C1 activated all the time because uh, mTOR reacts not only, in, that's where it kind of, we can go into some of the idea of a protein, so to say. So yes, mTOR is activated by protein and amino acids, uh, but also uh, glucose and insulin increase mTOR C1. So if you have diabetes, high blood sugar levels, insulin resistance, then uh, you have mTOR uh, C1 activated chronically because of the way uh, glucose and insulin turn on the mTOR uh, complex. Uh, so yeah, if you're obese and with uh, diabetes, then your mTOR is going to be turned on all the time. And that does apparently shorten lifespan and also accelerate these uh, comorbidities and different kinds of aging related diseases. Whereas if you don't, if you restrict calories, if you under eat a little bit, um, then uh, this uh, doesn't happen. 48% body fat. Next up, we'll react to uh, a clip from Huberman uh, Lab, which is uh, Andrew Huberman's podcast, and they also had uh, David Sinclair as a guest. So we'll react to this clip as well and give some uh, more context and information. In order to maximize their wellness and fitness, and in some cases muscle growth, but also just wellness. But what I interpret elastic to mean is that loosening, because the trigger cellular growth is actually pro-aging in some sense. Is that right? Well, it could be. That's that's what the evidence suggests. And again, it goes back to the debate, should you supplement with growth hormone or testosterone? All of these activities will give you immediate benefits. You'll, you'll bulk up more. You'll feel better immediately. But based on the research, it's at the expense of long-term health. But I tried to actually, here's the key, and I haven't said this publicly that I can remember, I pulse things so that I get periods of fasting, and then I eat, then I take a supplement, then I fast, then I exercise, and I'm, I'm taking the supplements and eating in the right timing to allow me to build up muscle sometimes. Because you can't just expect to take something constantly and do something constantly for it to work. And that's, that's why it's taken me about 15 years to develop my protocol. So here he talks about the content of the amino acids uh, in the protein that uh, does basically is the key that regulates the mTOR complex and uh, the aging pathway. So yes, mTOR is most sensitive to these uh, branch chain, chain amino acids, leucine, uh, isoleucine, valine. Uh, those are the most anabolic amino acids, so to say. So they, they promote protein synthesis the most. They were, the mTOR responds to them the most. And actually leucine is the critical amino acid required for turning on mTOR. So if you have low leucine but high protein, then you may not necessarily turn on the mTOR as much uh, as you would with high leucine a meal. Uh, so that's why I, I, that is what I agree with as well, that uh, leucine can be, um, let's say, pro-growth. It's definitely pro-growth. Whether or not it's pro-aging is another story again, because, you know, obviously you don't want to become too frail. You don't want to become um, catabolic and, uh, you know, become uh, basically like very skinny and skinny fat because of suppressing your mTOR all the time and not eating any leucine, because you do need leucine and protein to build muscle and maintain uh, different kinds of, you know, has good aspects of health. So mTOR can be bad because of it uh, uh, increases senescent cell growth, causes immune senescence, promotes malignant growth, accelerates the growth in general, causes insulin resistance, declines uh, or decreases beta cell function, may cause muscle atrophy and uh, inhibits autophagy. But mTOR can slow aging by building, making you build muscle. There is an association between muscle mass and muscle strength with longevity. So people who have more muscle strength than muscle mass, they basically have, have live a bit longer or at least their health span is longer. You will have more bone density, obviously, because of having more muscle mass. Uh, nerve cell growth requires mTOR. Neurogenesis requires mTOR. Uh, glucose homeostasis in the short term uh, is benefited by mTOR because mTOR does help with the insulin production uh, or insulin sensitivity. And T-cell activation as well, which is uh, basically responsible for the immune system. Uh, so in the short term, yeah, this uh, mTOR activation or at least infrequent activations of mTOR are very beneficial that... If you uh, get exposed to mTOR every once in a while, not in chronic amounts, not as you would in uh, insulin resistance or obesity, then that would be quite beneficial. Now the question is, okay, how much is too much or how much would you want to stimulate mTOR? Uh, that is the kind of uh, key uh, question. And uh, obviously the average person 
who doesn't really care about their health, they may eat uh, from you know the moment they wake up until the moment they go to bed, six meals a day, sometimes even more. And all those meals, even small snacks, those will spike insulin, spike blood sugar, and those will also activate mTOR. So your body will be in this chronic growth stage all the time. It never has the opportunity to turn on autophagy or the other longevity pathways because it's basically fed continuously. And that accelerates the aging of let's say, at least health span. Your health span and your biological age will be accelerated because of being in this chronically growth chronically fed state and you're never in this uh, repair state and uh, recycling state whereas if you let's say skip a few meals uh, which is intermittent fasting and what david sinclair also ends up you know, promoting uh, that you do time restricted eating you confine your eating window into a small time frame then um, you're going to see drastically different results because you only spike mTOR maybe like twice a day or once a day depending on your eating schedule and at other times you basically go into a deeper state of autophagy and uh, you turn on the sirtuins as well these other longevity pathways uh, that are associated with some improved health span uh, and uh, the situation is uh, much different so to say because the problem is that this is the something that um, I kind of slightly disagree with him in that sense that according to David Sinclair then you would also need to restrict your overall protein intake uh, just because of the association of higher protein intake and higher leucine and amino acids with the activation of mTOR and suppression of autophagy which I slightly disagree with because you know, you can't avoid turning on mTOR, even like eating like a banana will turn on mTOR, and banana is low in protein. Uh, eating a steak will turn on mTOR because it's high in protein, uh, but, you know, how much different, it doesn't mean that eating a steak would activate mTOR more than uh, eating a banana would, or let's say a high carb meal that is low in protein, you eat an entire basket of bananas or let's say equivalent of calories 500 calories of bananas versus 500 calories of steak uh, both will turn on mTOR and uh, maybe the steak will turn on the mTOR a bit more because it's in higher in protein uh, but the uh, you don't need to necessarily restrict the protein uh, because uh, there's a threshold how much mTOR you can cap off per meal and uh, this apparently in human at, the, at least in human studies you see that from a muscle building perspective, if you eat 1.6 grams per kilogram of um, uh, protein, then you're not going to see any increased muscle growth after that fact. Uh, you will see the muscle growth uh, plateaus after 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight in protein intake. And you can eat 2.4, you can eat 5.0 grams per kilogram of protein, you're not going to build any more muscle and it thus means that you're not really, you know, you're not really turning on more mTOR either, uh, so to say. So there is a cap off after which this uh, mTOR stimulation will not happen anymore. Eating less will basically, it could mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're not stimulating more mTOR either because you could be eating basically sugar and uh, a lot of, like the average obese person, uh, person with diabetes and metabolic syndrome, they're not eating a high protein diet. They're eating a sort of relatively low protein, but they're still having this mTOR uh, activated and then they're experiencing accelerated aging because they're just eating too many calories and eating too much sugar and carbs that also turns on mTOR. So yeah, the, the protein intake itself is just one aspect of it. The other aspect is how many carbs you're eating, how much insulin are you spiking and the eating frequency, how many times a day are you doing it? Because like I said, even a small snack will activate mTOR and the key much rather much rather or much smarter more effective way to limit mTOR activation instead of re reducing protein intake would be to just confine your eating window into let's say one to two meals then you don't really have to worry about the mTOR activation and uh, yeah there are studies that find that the maximal amount of protein synthesis that you can ach achieve per meal is around 20 grams 20 to 40 grams uh, you're not going to stimulate protein synthesis more if you eat 50 grams of protein, for example. And that is because uh, mTOR will directly turn on protein synthesis. And you can basically, there's no direct way to look at how much mTOR you activated. There's no there's no blood work, blood marker for that, with the exception of maybe uh, insulin and IGF-1 levels. You can assess maybe your I don't know, mTOR activation, but that's a lot of very accurate way of doing it. Uh, but yeah, the protein synthesis peaks at 20 to 40 grams of protein per meal. And even if you eat 100 grams from a huge steak, then you're not going to turn on more mTOR in that meal. The body taps off. 
So the E in frequency, if you want to overcome this limit, if you want to turn on more mTOR, you want to you know you want to build more muscle, you want to age faster, <laughs> then you would have to spike the mTOR, let's say six times a day. Uh, and if you even if you eat let's say 200 grams of protein, which is more than your body needs, you know double the amount that your body would need per day. Uh, but you do it within one to two meals in a s smaller eating window, then you're still active at mTOR twice. Uh, compared to eating that same amount of protein across six meals, you would spike the mTOR six times, and thus your overall daily, let's say, speed of biological aging, for the lack of a better word, uh, from the mTOR theory, uh, that would be uh, worse for your longevity just because of having this higher eating frequency. That's kind of the main point. So you can you go you don't need to restrict your protein intake as long as you're doing time restricted eating. And uh, if I were to, I would, I, I do agree that excess protein, excess amino acids, these leucine and maybe other amino acids like methionine in the mix, they potentially could contribute to faster aging, but only if you're eating six times a day. If you're eating twice a day, uh, then it doesn't really matter. If you're eating once a day, then it matters even less because your protein st synthesis will cap off after the 20 to 40 grams protein limit mark and you do need at least 20 grams of protein per meal to you know maintain muscle and such if you eat less then you're eventually going to lose muscle and become catabolic and cachexic so uh, <laughs> so yeah you don't want to be eating a chronic low protein diet um, but you can uh, basically biohack or you can sidestep some of the mTOR stimulation by doing time restricted eating essentially the amino acid perspective then uh, another amino acid besides leucine that accelerates aging or is associated with aging is uh, methionine. So there is quite a lot of uh, evidence which is that yeah, like excess methionine turns off turns on this mTOR pathway as well as increases IGF-1 levels, which will promote the growth of malignancies and tumors. But supplementing with uh, glycine has been found to uh, basically counteract this negative effect on longevity. Uh, by balancing methionine. You know, most people eat too much methionine. Uh, they would uh, eat a lot of uh, steak and um, red meat that are high in methionine, uh, whereas they don't eat a lot of any glycine at all. And uh, plant-based, that's also one of the reasons I think like plant-based proteins can be beneficial for longevity because of their naturally low in methionine and naturally low in uh, leucine. Uh, so uh, yeah, Excess, I think excess protein could accelerate aging if you're eating too frequently, eating six times a day, that will be bad for your longevity uh, of high protein intake and high methionine intake specifically, and uh, especially also eating uh, high methionine foods, like a lot of meats and a lot of eggs, fish, they're all high in methionine, and as long if you don't supplement glycine, or if you don't get at least a part of your daily protein from plant-based sources, then that could be probably a bad for, uh, let's say, longevity or the lifespan side. It doesn't say anything about your health span. So probably like a high, high meat, high carnivore diet is pretty good for your health span. Like you will have a lot of energy, you will have good muscle mass, you will have strong bones, you will have good insulin sensitivity. You will have, yeah, just, you know, your health span is good, you're functionally fit and etc. But it probably isn't the best for the lifespan, directly linked to lifespan of uh, how many biological or chronological years you're going to end up having. Uh, whereas it is maybe good for the health span. So, yeah, basically, there is a, ba there is a balance that you need to achieve. Like uh, Sinclair says, that sometimes you spike mTOR, sometimes you consume the high protein intake. And at other times, you kind of keep it low how frequently you should spike and pulse this protein and the mTOR that depends a lot on your, your goals your uh, dietary uh, choices your eating schedule how much you exercise and those kind of things if you exercise a lot you want to build muscle then obviously you would need to spike the mTOR and protein synthesis more frequently if you um, do time restricted eating you eat only once or twice a day then you don't really need to worry about it uh, i don't think so um, like i've eaten a pretty high protein intake uh, for a long time and like if you look at my let's say how do you measure your my mTOR levels there's no direct way to measure the mTOR levels but if I, if I measured my IGF-1 levels then my IGF-1 levels were very low like 100 which is much lower than someone who restricts protein <laughs> and the reason for that is because of eating only once or twice a day and uh, from an mTOR suppression side then fasting is a much bigger suppressor, suppressor of mTOR than restricting protein. And uh, yeah, I guess the goal or the end message is that 
just do Triumph Seed Eating. I think that's the best way to both activate Autophagy and suppress mTOR and you don't really have to worry about being on this very low protein diet that may potentially be bad for other aspects of health and longevity like muscle mass and bone density. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. All right, that's it for this video. If you want to check out uh, what I do, then you can read my books about this uh, topic as well, Metabolic Autophagy and uh, others. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.